What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're taking a look at two new AEW Unrivaled figures, and we're taking a look at AEW Unrivaled Collection Series 14, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee. I guess you're just going to have to see these two square off in the review because we're not getting them in an actual AEW ring. No, but seriously, though, we were robbed of that feud. I mean, good God. But I'm intrigued with these. I know a lot of people are going to be excited for Swerve Strickland. Of course, big-time AEW Championship match just the other night at Revolution. It was an impeccable match if you guys missed it. And then Keith Lee, no strength to action figures. We actually have a quite a few from Mattel, which we are going to compare to this figure in this video. But if you guys would like to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles, where we grab these figures using code MDTOYS. I greatly appreciate it, man, when you guys use the code. Always appreciate that and the support on the channel. You can use the code, save 10% over there. Better than full price. I mean, that's just the facts. Nonetheless, man, here's our front viewing windows of each character. We do have Swerve over here, looking damn good in this white jacket. Even though it is rubber, I do like the aesthetic of it. But a Really cool gear, reminds me of Clemson. It's giving me real Clemson vibes right now, but a little bit of Phoenix Suns, but real Clemson vibes. Clemson, shout out to the Clemson Tigers. Psych, roll tide, Brad. But Swerve Strickland, you got his name down the side, you get a nice image of it. Why the hell is it so dark? God in heaven. Got a shot of Swerve there, and of course, all the good stuff. Number 126, a picture of Swerve. Rest of the figures in the way. Billy Gunn is the chase. The guys did not pick him up in the three pack, but we also have Keith Lee here, man. A lot of people complain about the skinny arms on the jacket. I don't know if the shape is correct or not. I haven't looked at it or analyzed it enough, but there's big old Keith Lee there. Keith Lee on the side, you got 125 on Rival Collection, and then on the back, you do have the big man right there. Well, I guess you can kind of see the arms right there, man. Yeah, I guess the arms are a little bit disproportionate from the front, but hood still looks good there on the back, and that is our Keith Lee packaging, man. But what we're going to do is crack these guys out of their packaging, find out what they're all about, see if they are worth a damn. Are they crap? Are they good? Are they in between, man? Let's find out together as we crack open AEW and Rival 14, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee. So here is Swerve and Keith Lee out of the packaging, man. Liking a lot of the things that I'm seeing here. I've gotten to pose them around, gotten to see the whole deal here with Swerve and Keith. But they're not perfect by any stretch. We're going to dive into all the lore of each character, all their accessories, all the different stuff that we always cover in these reviews, man. So buckle the hell up. We're going to dive into Keith Lee's accessories and Keith Lee. And then we're going to run it back and take a closer look at Swerve's accessories and Swerve. I mean, getting into Keith Lee's accessories, you get a rubber entrance jacket and interchangeable hands. And like we touched on before, the silhouette here is a bit odd. Like, this arm is super scary. I mean, dude, that's that's not Keith Lee's arm. Keith Lee's arm is much bigger. However, I will say, his arm's pretty damn skinny on the front of his jacket that he wore. It kind of, like, you guys saw the comparison. It was pretty skinny. It's not as skinny as this, maybe. But, I mean, it's pretty accurate to what it looks like. Even though it doesn't look like Keith Lee's arm. Unless they, unless they photoshopped it on the back of the packaging, too. But, got the pink outline and the white outline in there. Something just bit me on the back of the neck, I think. Hope it wasn't a spider. Limitless on the back. You got the 7 there. It looks like a 7, but it does have, you know, the infinity gauntlet, the infinity sign. Going through the, what looks like a 7, but when you turn it upside down, it's limitless, obviously, infinity. And then the L for... Keith Lee. But yeah, it fits the figure well. It's just, it's a rubber entrance coat, and it can clasp together. It's got a nice sculpted zipper on there, but you guys know how I feel about the rubber goods. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get interchangeable fists here, and these look pretty damn good. These are a new sculpt, I think. They're bigger, too. These are big hands, man. All right, let's compare this fist to a swerve fist. And look at that. They are different, man. Keith Lee's got big hands compared to the swerve figure, so that's pretty damn nice. These are nicely sculpted. I like these. And the same thing goes for these mic holding slash grappling hands. They are larger than the regular hands that Swerve comes with. So you love to see that. Good attention to detail. So getting into Keith Lee, man, starting out with the head sculpt. I don't hate the head sculpt. It's not my favorite of all time. However, it's not bad. I mean, it's very comparable to the Mattel one, or at least it's very similar. I mean, I'd argue, I think it's better than the Mattel one, actually. I think it is better than the Mattel one. I think the likeness is better, in my opinion. I think the shape is a little bit better there. But I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think down in the comment section below. He does have, you know, the straight. I don't remember him having this much hair in a... AEW, or at least this darker pair. I remember him having like salt and pepper going on. I remember a lot of gray in the beard and in the hair, but maybe I'm wrong there. You guys can let me know. But here's the new torso that we have going on here. Very difficult to get an ab crunch out of this guy. I mean, he's basically he's basically like Taz. Like, he doesn't have an ab crunch whatsoever. Just kind of the difficulty that you run into when you have a figure, you know, a larger character like this. It's just the way it is. One thing they could have done to maybe fix this is to cut up the belly a little bit higher here, similar to an Ultimate Edition, instead of of dropping it so low because then it forms that lip there and when you form that lip it's not going anywhere so had they cut this out right here you may have gotten a little bit more of a diaphragm movement because then if this ball joint sticking down in there when you slide this forward this would have somewhere to go 
go, but because this drops down so far, it runs into the stomach immediately. So that's just the way that is there. But I'm also noticing in person that the upper torso is a little bit lighter than the uh, the stomach part. I don't know if you guys are getting that on camera, but I do like the arm size. I like the shoulders and everything. He has kind of a hunchback going on, but not too bad there, as you guys can tell. But the elbow pads look good. I like the black sculpted wrist tape. He's got the black gear with the pink. I like pink a lot. Kind of wish they didn't go with the black and pink, uh, but you know, I don't know how many gear options they had, but Keith Lee, bright, bold letters on the back here as we zoom back in. You got Keith Lee on the butt. You got Limitless on this leg, and then on the other leg, you get that Infinity Gauntlet logo like we talked about before. He's got the thickum thighs right there. He's got these knee pads, which really hinder the knee bend, which we'll get into in a second, but he also has the shorter boots here, which, I don't know, man, I just, it's some AEW boots are just, oh, man. Jesus. Swerve's boots are a lot better than these, and also Swerve's boots, I don't know exactly what they are, but they're better than John Moxley's and Eddie Kingston's too, which I'll get into, but as far as Keith is concerned, man, again, you're, you're not bending that ab crunch. It's just not happening. Uh, back bend, you can do a little bit there. Maybe just a tad there. You get a little bit of rotation there. If you spin them at all, it's going to pop off there. I mean, the arms are pretty buttery smooth. You get a good bicep cut. Double jointed arm with the elbow pad on there is actually not quite bad. He can split see a little bit, kick forwards a little bit, hindered obviously, you know, for obvious reasons there. And then the knee pad is going to, you know, kind of, it's going to restrict you from getting a full knee bend in there. But he does have upper thigh cut, which cuts it to short, which is really nice. He has butt, boot cut, of course. Ankles move down and up. He has an ankle pivot. But, you know, like, it's kind of similar to, like, Hook. Like, Hook's boots, man, he doesn't stand worth a damn. Mine fall over all the time. And then these boots for Keith Lee also do the same thing here. I don't know, man. Just not my, not my favorite there. Not my favorite by any stretch. But let's get into some Keith Lee figure comparisons. So for your Keith Lee figure comparisons, guys, here is every Mattel Elite Keith Lee. Holy shish, dude. I don't remember when they started calling him Bear Claw, or what was that? What was that? Well, I can't even remember what the hell they called him, but that was terrible. No offense to that. It's just he was fine as Keith Lee, man. There was no point in that, but you do have the blue Survivor Series Elite here. Then you have the Elite 82 and the Elite 82 Chase, or maybe this is the Elite 82 and the Elite 82. I'm pretty sure this is this, and then this is the Survivor Series, if I'm not mistaken, but you have like a UCLA colorway. You have the gray and pink, which is actually the Chase attire of this Unrivaled 14 Keith Lee. Then you have the black, blue, and silver here. It is good to have all these Keith Lee figure options, though. I will say that. And standing them next to each other, they all look pretty damn good up next to one another, if I say so myself. They scale the exact same, which is kind of crazy, something that you don't see a lot from AEW Jazzwares and WWE Elite. You know, you used to, you know, or WWE Mattel, you used to get a lot better scaling, in my opinion, that we've kind of fallen from that, which really disappoints me in certain areas, but... I do like the uh, the the scaling here. It looks really good, and I think that Mattel probably made him a little bit too lean, so I think the Jazzwares probably captured that body style a little bit more, but, you know, you're going to get a lot better ab crunch out of this Keith Lee than you are out of this one over here, but, that you know, it's just the way that the, uh, you know, the way the figures are tooled and whatnot, but it is cool to see all these up next to each other by far. It is really nice. And then for another figure comparison, here is the new Keith Lee up next to our MDT Elite Champion Kenny Omega and our MDT Champion Roman Reigns right there, so just a nice little scale. He kind of fits in between there, which is probably pretty accurate. I want to say that Keith Lee's 6'2", so I think this works pretty good right here. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, it's probably accurate. So for Swerve's accessories, very similar to Keith Lee. You get rubber accessories, you get interchangeable hands, but you do get added sunglasses. So that's a big W. The only thing I hate about these is they're so damn flimsy, man. And you can get them on the figure, but they're very flimsy, man. They're very flimsy. Like, you'll get them on there, but they're they're not fun to get on there. Wish they had a little bit more stiffness. Giggity. But see, they'll go on there, and they look good on there. I just wish they had a little... I wish they weren't so flimsy, man. Like, look at this right here. It's got freaking rubber glasses on. And then outside of that, you do get the jacket here, which is a white jacket. It's got the black fur in there, and the logos look good. And, you know, it's a good sculpt, and you have cool things going on with that. I like these panels and all the different, you know, pockets and little sculpts in there. Cool stuff, but... But man, it's rubber, so it's like, I don't, I don't want to see that, ever, really. I, I can't stand the rubber jackets. They need to be retired. They're just, I don't know, man. I'm just, I will never be a fan of it. Just never been a fan of it. Never will be a fan of it. It's just, I'd rather you not include anything. That's just the bandwagon that I'm on. I don't know. Let me know what you think. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get fisted hands. You got the tattoo on the right side there with a the skull, I do believe, which looks good. These are nicely sculpted fists. Beat the hell out of people, of course. And then you get the grappling slash mic holding hand. I mean, his right hand's sort of a, a mic holding hand. His left hand's sort of a grappling hand, as you guys can see. But he's got the tattoo on there, and, you know, these look good. I think they did a good job on the skin tone. All right, so getting into Swerve, starting out the head sculpt. I actually like this head sculpt. I like the 
sort of uh, snarling face. I think it works really good for Swerve. I love the hair, you know, the braided hair, the dreadlocks or the dreads, whatever you want to say there. Looks pretty damn good. Again, hairstyle's different nowadays and whatnot. Or I guess it's kind of not. It's just, you know, he pulls it back most of the time, but looks pretty good there, you know, for the most part. I'd say the grills look good and everything, which looks nice. Going down to the tattoos on the torso, I really like. I like I like this torso choice for Swerve. I like the tattoos and everything. I don't know if he has any more since this figure has come out or what have you, but uh, all that looks good. I like the continuation of the tattoo right there. That's very nice as well. But he's got all his tattoo details in here. I like the sleeve. He's got the white wrist tape, which is sculpted on. He's even got his tattoo on the back of the neck or the shoulders right there, which are eyes, I do believe. Yeah, dude, looking pretty damn good. He even has the sculpted belt in here. Purple and the orange bleeding together, kind of NWO style right there. Kind of got like a like a lava lamp blood dripping style deal. On this side it says swerve, and on this side you have like the zombified version of swerve. And he's got the white open knee pads on the back there, which is great for a knee bend, man. You love to see that. One thing I don't like is there's no shin cut. Really wish there would have been shin cut, but the silver paint here is very clean. And then here's the boots that I'm talking about, man. These are newly sculpted. These are newly sculpted, and they feel so much better than the Moxley boots and things of that nature. But as far as articulation, man, you get a really good ab crunch in here, which I really like. Head can look up pretty good, look down pretty good. You get nice tight joints here. Not too tight either. They're the perfect amount, I think. Double jointed arm, you know, you get good diaphragm pivoting and all this stuff. He can do the splits. Ridiculous. We'll say the legs feel a little bit loose, but he can kick forward really nice. Can't kick back that much because of his butt, which is super flat, by the way. Jesus. But the double joint is really nice. You have the thigh cut. No shin cut, but you do get the boot cut there, which is very nice. But yeah, dude, this, this figure feels pretty damn quality. You know, I wish the legs weren't as loose as they are. However, the, uh, the Swerve Scott figure right here, man, looking pretty damn good, man. So for your Swerve figure comparisons, we do have the Elite Champion Kenny Omega and the Indy T champion Roman Reigns and I think this scales pretty good not overly massive like they do sometimes so that's always beautiful I think he looks really really clean right here fits in well between these two guys which is always beautiful to see and then for another comparison we do have Hangman and we do have Samoa Joe with the AEW championship looking again these scale really well together man again another banger triple threat matchup at Revolution what a just a fantastic match man what a fantastic show my god but yeah this looks pretty cool I think all three of these scale well together really good scaling on these figures I think they did a much better job scaling these guys compared to how we saw on that series eight with some of those characters so this is always nice to see but yeah swerve is looking nice man i'm really appreciating this figure man he's gonna be up there he's gonna be up there in the aew figures of the year i think you know i i know they've been talking about multiple releases this year and they're gonna get a lot out so hopefully that'll be the case but as far as I'm concerned, this Swerve is going to be in the top 10. At the end of the day, I really like the Swerve figure, but the Keith Lee is lacking in a lot of ways, man. It really, it kind of reminds me of the Mattel equivalent of Mark Henry, and I hate to say that because you guys know I can't stand the damn Mark Henry figures. And I love Mark Hen Henry, and I love Keith Lee, man, but damn, they're figures, man. Like, I, I really, I don't know, like, this torso doesn't really capture the massiveness, I don't think, of Keith Lee, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of difficult for articulation purposes. So I do, get, like, at some point, you do have to sacrifice design and aesthetic for you know posability and such that you know you have to find that happy medium that's just part of the job description to be honest with you it's not my favorite gear of all time i do you know black and pink are cool together i love pink as you guys know but i don't know i, I like that they added the pink in there but the black and pink you know it's not, it's not the most exciting gear i guess when you throw in the knee pads and the boots and the elbow pads and the wrist tape and it's all black there not my favorite gear of all time but the swerve figure is really damn good i enjoy the swerve figure a hell of a lot i like the gear going on there of course this figure is outdated it's not that it's up to date and whatnot, and I really wish he had shin cut. Man in heaven, how did they forget the shin cut? They did the same thing with Dan Housen. I, you know, it's not the biggest deal of all time, but I still do like when they include the shin cut, man. Shin cut needs to just be a universal thing across every figure in existence. Shin cut, man. And shin cut's okay not to have if you have boots, because a boot in itself is a shin cut. But when the articulation is super light, like it doesn't matter on the Swerve figure in the Dan Housen. It's not a deal breaker or anything. I just like to have a shin cut, man. Not a lower shin cut, but a shin cut in the middle of the shin. How many times can I say that? This swerve's really fun. I've found myself posing him around nicely. Keith Lee is a bit tough to pose, man. Legs are a little bit loose as well, but I like the likeness. I like the toyetic features of Swerve, and I like Keith Lee a hell of a lot, and I am glad to have him in a AEW and rival figure form, but he definitely falls short of the Swerve figure. The Swerve figure is definitely better, in my opinion, but I do like both these figures, and I would, recommend, I would definitely recommend the Swerve figure. I mean, Keith Lee, he does have three elites, so I mean, you know, you may already have a Keith Lee. Of course, this does have have double jointed arms and what have you. 
However, on Swerve does have a basic, which I never owned. I saw it multiple times at Big Lots, but Big Lots be tripping on their prices, and I wasn't about to pay that. You know, when I go into Big Lots, I used to be looking for a deal. Now, I mean, they're, they're pretty much a full-ass retail store now, Brad. So, you know, you have to take that with a with a thing there. you, you got to come into account there. I should have picked up the Swerve, though. I, th I do believe they had both versions, too, which makes me sick. But I wanted, like, $20 for the basic, man. I wasn't paying that at that time. I would kindly pay it today, but this Swerve figure is nice. I like it a hell of a lot. I like everything going on with it, man. And I would recommend you pick up the Swerve. Keith Lee, if you have the Elites, I don't think you're missing much with this AEW figure. Nonetheless, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up the review of the AEW and Rival 14 Swerve and Keith Lee, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below, of course, on everything. And a hell of a shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel, man. I appreciate all those guys over there. Thank you guys so very much for all you do. And thank you for all the support, as always, man. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. But I'm getting out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one. I'll catch you later, and I'll see you next time.